What are we? What am I? But what am I? What is that? What is a human? We are an accumulation of tinier organisms. We are essentially a hive comprised of over 100 trillion cells, individual cells. But at the same time, all these tiny little cellular organisms are part of this much bigger superorganism that is me, that is you. That's what we are. We're this huge super swarm organism. That's amazing. Now, just like us, the Earth has trillions of tiny organisms inside of her. Essentially, me and you. Birds, trees, frogs, Justin Bieber. It's actually quite a diverse population. Are all of these trillions of different organisms that make up the Earth's body, are they all functioning together like a super swarm organism? Like us, like our bodies do. Is that what the Earth is doing? Is she doing the same thing that we're doing? According to Gaia theory, the answer is yes. Whoa. According to Gaia theory, the Earth is an organism that maintains homeostasis. Like all organisms, it maintains the internal conditions of its body so that its life can continue. We can see her do this. You know, if you look at the Earth from space, you can see all the trillions of organisms inside of her come together to make up organs. You know, just like the cells in our body do. Welcome to the lungs of the Earth. That is literally the Earth breathing on a one-year cycle. You see the Earth inhaling carbon to grow green plant life in the spring. These plants then create clouds. And these clouds exhale snow in the winter, creating massive ice sheets that cool the planet. This is how the Earth breathes. If the Earth stopped breathing, she'd suffocate, which is just another way of saying that all life would die. If all those green organisms that you see here stop creating clouds, scientists estimate the surface temperature of our planet would be over 300 degrees. No life would be able to survive that. Earth would die. The Earth's organisms aren't just regulating the ideal temperature to support life. That alone would be incredible. But that's just the beginning. Organisms also regulate the composition of the atmosphere and the salinity levels in the oceans. Without these things, life on our planet would end. But it doesn't end. Because all the organisms inside the Earth have her back. The Earth is a super organism made up of over 10 million different species inside her body. 10 million different species. Each one of these species in her body plays a role. Once you understand the complex processes of the Earth's living systems and how deeply embedded you are, you stop seeing yourself as something that you are doing. You begin to see yourself as something that the entire Earth is doing. She's doing you, you're not doing you, right? You think you're doing you, but what you are really doing is what the entire Earth is doing at the place that you call here and now. That's what you are, you're the Earth. There is no distinction between you and her. She's not your environment. She's who you are. According to Gaia theory, we are the Earth. The Earth is a superorganism, and we are cells that she's grown in her body. The next question becomes, well, why is the Earth doing us? You know, what does the Earth need us for? Anything? Okay, this is where the science of Gaia theory ends and my own ideas begin. You know, personally, I do think that the Earth needs us. She needs our species. There's a laundry list of things that only our species can do that the Earth needs. So let's count them down. Number one, the Earth needs us to be her immune system. Badly. The Earth has cancer. Yeah, we've given it to her. And if we don't treat it, she's gonna die. I mean, look at her, right? She's dying of human overpopulation and overconsumption. We're the only organism that can treat this cancer. Other organisms have tried, like the Earth has grown AIDS, Ebola, bacteria, nothing seems to work. Armed with medical technology, we've sidestepped all these population 
control mechanisms. So nothing has inhibited our growth. So that now we have 7.2 billion human consumers tearing the ecosystem to shreds. <laughs> the earth is dying. She's collapsing. Why have we overpopulated so much? Why have we overconsumed so much? Well, we've done this because we've organized our culture around a myth. And by myth, I don't mean a fiction. I mean a story to live by, right? A story that you can organize your purpose in life around. All cultures are organized around myths. Some are good and some are bad, right? And I think the myth that we have right now that we've organized our culture around, it sucks. So what, what is the dominant myth in our culture? Well, the dominant myth is that the best way to have a good life is to make babies and to make a lot of money. Right? That's the story that people organize their lives around. Now, obviously, this myth has resulted in overpopulation and overconsumption. Ecocide is the logical conclusion of everybody believing in this myth. This is where this myth takes us. To the end of the world. So we need to change our myth. We need to organize our culture around a different myth. We need to organize our lives around a different myth. According to the Gaian myth, we have a higher purpose. We were grown to support this super organism that we're part of. If the earth is a super organism, then we are cells in her body. And that means we have a purpose, just like our, our skin cells have a purpose. They do all kinds of things. You know, they reproduce, they consume, they poo, but that's not their ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose of your skin cells is not to reproduce or poo or have a good life. The ultimate purpose of your skin cells is to enable you to continue surviving. That's why you grew your skin cells. It wasn't so that they could enjoy themselves. Right? It was so that you could continue to be, you could continue to survive. And in exactly the same way, if the earth grew us, then we have the same purpose to ensure the continued survival of the superorganism that grew us. The earth. That's why we exist. That's why we were grown. That's why she grows us. And that's why we grow them, little puppies. We need to organize our culture around that myth. And if we do, she'll survive. She'll thrive. Number two, the earth needs us to be her reproductive system. Every organism wants to reproduce. Our earth is no exception. And she seems to be using our species to help her do that, which is weird and amazing, right? At least to me, I find that amazing. We have launched a rocket ship into space. I mean, just look at this thing, this mighty erect penis blasting off into space. Once in space, this rocket ship ejaculates, releasing its sperm into space. The sperm is a space probe that searches the galaxy for an egg, a planet, to fertilize. That's essentially what our space probes do. They scan other planets to see if they're habitable for Earth life. That's what our space probes are doing. They're little sperms floating through the galaxy looking for a planet to impregnate so that we can create a bunch of Earth babies. Psst, that sounds crazy, but that's exactly what's happening. Our species is trying to pollinate our galaxy with Earth babies. If our science and technology has enough time to mature, we very well may succeed. I would love to see that. Number three, the Earth needs us to be her self-defense system. Meteors from space are a huge threat to life on our planet. In its youth, when our planet was just a baby, she suffered a series of brutal bombardments from space. Right? The moon itself is a remnant of one of those bombardments. And each time these huge celestial objects smash into the Earth, life has to start over again. These are mass species extinction causing events. But then she developed us, a radical new form of planetary protection, a species of night watchmen that track large celestial bodies with telescopes in the night sky. The Earth has never grown any species that could deflect 
an asteroid that would wipe her out. But now she has. Because we actually have the technological potential to do that. That is kind of amazing. Yeah! Are you feeling the awesomeness? Like, if you're not feeling that, I don't know, man. I don't know about you. I feel like that's kind of amazing. NASA is currently designing a laser cannon that will shoot out a laser and incinerate a large celestial object on an impact course for our planet. NASA's doing this right now. Thank you, NASA, for fulfilling the higher purpose of our species by protecting our planet. Like, mm, seriously, you deserve that. It took the Earth 4.5 billion years to grow us, a technologically advanced civilization that could protect her in this way. Right? Like, dolphins cannot shoot lasers into space and destroy asteroids that are on a collision course for our planet. Saving the Earth by blowing up space rocks with laser beams is a uniquely human ability. We are kind of amazing. So that's Gaia theory. The theory that the Earth is a superorganism that grew us to ensure her own survival, giving our species a collective purpose, a destiny. Do I want to say that word? It's so epic. Fuck it, I'm going to say it. A destiny. Yes. Science has always shied away from talking about a higher purpose in human life. But if Gaia theory is true, then a human higher purpose becomes a scientific fact. Basically, Gaia theory is what happens when science makes sweet love to philosophy and gives birth to a mythology baby. And this mythology baby, she might grow up one day and save the world. The end.